Welcome we're back. back. We Welcome are back, back and we're moving now into our second segment yes. for the morning. Now, yes, this one is all about the, the Ambassador's Fund for Cultural Preservation. It is a very important conversation and uh, we'll be breaking that down for you. As a matter of fact, in with us, we've got the Director of Archaeology at Niche, Dr. Melissa Badillo. And we also have Adam Benz, my buddy, Public Affairs Officer at the U.S. Embassy in Belmopan. Guys, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right. All right. So, so, so oh, let's get on into it. I, you know, this is a very important one simply because people don't necessarily uh, have the belief that we're supposed to be preserving certain areas when it comes to rebuilding or actually building culture. Mm. Uh, Dr. Badillo, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the cultural pres preservation part of things and how important that is for our nation, Belize. Sure, definitely, John. Thank you so much. Um, you know, we have multitude of archaeological sites all across this country, and the Institute of Archaeology is responsible for, 14, for all of these, but specifically we have 14 of them which are open to the public for visitation. So these structures are being constantly faced by different pressures, including environmental challenges with um, the sunlight and the rains and with climate change effects these days with stronger hurricanes and storms, you know, these, um, the limestone material is very susceptible to all of this, um, the natural elements. In addition to that, we, when it's open to the public, we also have people treading the steps and the stairways, um, you know, looking at these different buildings. And so those all play a part in impacting the structures. Mm -hmm. And one of the main things that the Institute of Archaeology has to do then is constant maintenance of these structures. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that we have found, um, you know, a good partnership is through the Ambassadors Fund with the U.S. Embassy. And they have provided us with several grants over the years mm -hmm. that we have put to use in this kind of um, activity. Yeah. This current grant is um, out at the Lamanai Archaeological Reserve. It's a 12-month project, wow. and it's actively ongoing out there with the conservation work on the High Temple. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Lamanai site, yeah. but it's the tallest structure out there. Yeah. And so, you, as you can see on the images here, we have active um, conservation of this structure taking place. And what will happen is that the entire facade will be um, restructured so that it's safe enough for people to go on there and we will have another period that we can um, have the structure be stable. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the, the fund itself for cultural preservation, Adam, because culture is many things and, and one at the same time. And just one of these things are, of course, the beautiful High Temple at Lamanai. But let's talk about what the Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation actually covers um, in general. Yeah, that's, that's a really great question, April. Um, mm -hmm. To be honest, the, the Ambassador Fund for Cultural Preservation, I think, is one of the things that I love the most about my job here because it is something that's so important. It is something that was created by uh, Congress back in 2001 to give an opportunity to preserve cultural heritage around the world. The idea was basically that we wanted to support, build mutual understanding, support our heritage that we have in uh, common, and use this as an opportunity for economic growth, post-disaster recovery, and preserving basically these mutual bonds for these incredible sites. Um, so since that has happened in 2001, there's been over 100, um, over 1,100 uh, ambassador fund projects that have been successfully completed. It's a very competitive process. You have to apply from uh, to this very competitive system. Many, many countries are applying. I think in 2001, I think there's only 34 that were uh, approved of regular program. This has been a really exciting opportunity for us to have uh, this grant approved and to be able to work on this project. It is, the, though we've had previous ambassador fund grants, this is by far the largest grant. It's a $177,188 uh, for the reconstruction project. It's on an entirely different scale than what we've done before. We're hoping it's the beginning of many more because we know that the, the cultural heritage here in Belize is incredible. It's part of the world's patrimony. And yeah. Yeah. as friends, as neighbors, as people who care about Belize and Belizean culture, we want to help uh, preserve these things before they're gone. And you know, Dr. Badia will, will tell you a little bit more. I mean, everyone knows this temple in Lamanai. So many yeah. people know this. But we don't know how it's actually endangered um, yeah. by 
it, without being able to create the proper structure, this may not be able to be here for future generations. Yeah. It's something we need to be aware. We can preserve this not just for ourselves, but for our children and our grandchildren, everyone to come. So mm -hmm. we're proud to partner with Inch on this. So Dr. Badillo, uh, let's talk about uh, the preservation itself of the High Temple. Uh, you know, excavation and, and making sure that the site is well preserved and open for the public to, to see it and of course to, to climb on. Uh, what areas of the High Temple were in need of, of focus on how are you using this uh, particular grant to secure them? Sure, thank you, April. Um, actually, the Lamanai, at Lamanai, the High Temple has been, um, we've closed off access for several years now due to the instability of the structure. Mm -hmm. And so with this grant, we're looking at particularly the base and the west side um, access. And so we're doing as much as we can with, with the funding that we have and making the most use of that. We have our in-house conservator, um, doc, um, Mr. Jorge Khan, who is out there and leading these um, conservation works. We're employing the locals from within the communities there surrounding the Lamanai Archaeological Reserve and, and sharing with them and as well teaching them, you know, alternative lifestyles as well, alternative jobs job opportunities yeah. because they're them learning about this technique will ensure that we can have access to skilled personnel as we move forward in maintaining the structures because the project is a year a 12-month project yeah. and yeah. we will complete the works out there but beyond that 12 months we still need to do regular maintenance of the structures of course. so um they are learning all about the techniques used in archaeological conservation mm -hmm. you know finding selecting the best rocks to use, yeah. learning how to mix that mortar properly, yeah. and applying these onto the structures so that we have a stable structure uh, moving forward and we can reopen access to that building. Best oh. way, to, best way to, have, uh, to have actually done it uh, for the fact that, you know, reaching out to the, the folks in that particular area, they yeah. know best how to deal with their particular area. Uh, mm -hmm. But how, how, what's the progress so far you know, to know that the Lamanai was actually closed once. This is one of the most attractive pieces in our country. And when tourists come, this is actually what they're asking for because they've read about it. So when should we expect a reopening of the Lamanai? Oh, well, the Lamanai Archaeological Reserve is still open. We are only doing works. Um, we are doing a certain major area. works. Yes, at the High Temple, and then later on we'll move to the Mask Temple to do some conservation there. But the site remains open and people can walk around. It's actually very interesting because with the works ongoing, you get that visitors during this time will get the opportunity to see that happening and to understand why it is that we need to protect these structures. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a very cool time to visit if you haven't visited recently, um, to get out there and see what's taking place. So, uh, you know, and, and let's get back to Adam. You know, I've got to say, uh, uh, you know, kudos to you guys for actually uh, reckoning uh, the importance of cultural preservation within our country. Are there any pro uh, projects that we're looking at for Belize? Oh, we are always looking at projects for Belize. There's no question about that. I mean, that's one of the things I love doing my job is trying to find opportunities to connect Belize with opportunities to preserve what I know is incredibly important um, for Belize and for the world. And I would say, I guess, going back to what uh, Dr. Badillo said earlier, I think when we think about why this is important, there's so many people who think, well, why do we care about preserving uh, mm -hmm. Lamanai buildings that have been around for thousands of years? What, why are they going to fall down? Well, they don't realize that part of the act of re-encountering these, these uh, ancient places that were covered in trees and covered in landscape and opening them is now re-exposing the elements and then having tourists on top of that going there is now exposing them to different pressures that they didn't exist before. So yeah. even though they're ancient, they're also vulnerable. And so yeah. when we think about these things right now, if we really care about preservation, it's not just about buying a ticket. Mm -hmm. It's about investing to make sure that these can, can exist in the future for everyone who has to come. And so that we can have tourists there. We can have every Belizean go there and be able to be in these sites that they love. And yeah. And unfortunately, Lamanai is not the only place. And so I know that we're really happy to partner with Niche for other opportunities to work to preserve 
Belize's incredible cultural history. And I can say that as someone who's been here for four years, uh, there's a lot of history here in Belize, and there's a lot that needs to be protected and conserved, and we're very much part of that uh, mission to do so. And again, this is the Ambassador's Fund, so I know I speak also for the Ambassador Kwan herself, because I know this is an issue that's close to her heart as well. I, 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 that was going to be my, my next question there, Adam, for, for Dr. Badio. How, uh, how did you select La Manai uh, to be that, um, that site for this particular fund, as seeing that we have you know, four, uh, 13 other sites that are open to the public and, of course, thousands of other archaeological sites that um, are still uh, ne needed for excavation? So how did you select La Manai? Sure. Um, well, you know, it, it's very difficult, but we do have to prioritize those vulnerabilities and we look at where we need it most, yeah. most urgently. And in this round, um, we, we decided to go with Lamanai. Of course, we are grateful for the Ambassadors Fund because we've been able to do several projects with them in the past. This is actually our seventh award wow. from them. And so we look forward to partnering with them and into the future to get more done because in Belize, we don't always have the funds to do this kind of work. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this grant actually is a really good um, way for us to access funds to do these kinds of work. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and it's, it's always a good time to have, uh, it's always good to know that we've got great relationships with countries like the mighty U.S. Mm -hmm. But uh, Dr. Brio, let's get into uh, another educational aspect of this in terms of, um, you know, of sites that we've got in our country. I feel that on a daily basis, people continue to find, uh, you know, new stuff. They continue to find uh, artifacts and they might not know how to, what to, when to, or they might not know uh, what, it, what it really is. Let's talk about protecting those. And are there new things that we're finding in our country? Sure. Um, John, you know, every day we find something new, either the public in their yard would find something. And in addition to that, we have archaeological projects that work in Belize. A lot of them are from the U.S., so we have great partnership with the U.S., not only through the Ambassadors Fund, but through the different universities who come to Belize to do research. I believe we have about 25 different projects that come in every year. Um, of course, during the pandemic, that was kind of halted, but as of last year, we've had people returning. And there are different technologies that are involved in archaeology nowadays, so we keep finding new things. And it's up to us as Belizeans and as the Institute of Archaeology, it's our responsibility to do as much as we can. So not only do we get um, help like this from the U.S. Ambassadors Fund program, but we've also had different partnerships with them through other MOUs and bilateral agreements um, with the U.S., with Mexico and Guatemala as well, that we um, help to look at you know, Im illegal um, importation mm -hmm. of artifacts that we can get those returned. We have um, wherever we can document the origin, we can get those back to wherever they belong. We've had cases where even stuff that appears in Belize, we've returned to our partners in Guatemala or in Mexico. So, you know, it's important for us uh, with our newly established enforcement and monitoring program as well mm -hmm. um, that we uh, we are out there educating persons on on what we the different activities that we're doing and in recording getting permits to keep those artifacts and educating people really on just the importance of the preservation and protection of these kinds of archaeological and other cultural resources when you're talking about um educating edu educating the public i'm really glad you brought that up because one of the one of the um, key factors in in archaeology is that if you understand what it is, you're going to know to leave it alone, or you're going to know that it's it's um, special in in some kind of way. And not many Belizeans are uh, privy to that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So uh, with this particular fund and with other projects that I know the, the Institute of Archaeology has lined up, uh, how are you all um, focusing on educate, educating the, the wider public? I know that you have that um, community relationship, but the wider public, the, the, the general Belizean public. Sure. Um, well, you know, we, we conduct lectures throughout the, state, throughout the country all during the year. We have different events where we highlight the importance of archaeology, mm -hmm. such as Archaeology Day, 
other events and specifically through a project like this at Lamanai, mm -hmm. the, an important component of it is that community engagement yes. where we're not only looking at the archaeological and cultural resources but looking at the archaeological the reserve holistically mm -hmm. and looking at the the role that plays for a healthy community as well mm -hmm. because um you know the Lamanai reserve is the only remaining forest in that immediate area yeah. so it is critical for the communities in 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 that area for you know access to clean air clean water having the the multitude of wildlife out there the biodiversity it's all a part of our community mm -hmm. so that is one angle that we're taking with the communities around Lamanai specifically through this project to get that engagement get that involvement and you know really bring awareness to just not only the archaeological um, resources but the entirety of what that reserve plays yeah. for for our community and for the commu the country in general yeah. so dr badio if i should find yeah. something that i feel is an artifact and i and i want to hold this dear to me because i feel that it is uh what would be the word uh profitable i feel that it's worth something mm -hmm. is that illegal um you know um any belizean can have an artifact registered in as a private collection as long as you can have a secure place to keep it you bring it into the institute of archaeology we will document it as part of the larger belize national collection and you get a license to keep it but with that license it means that you understand your roles and responsibilities in protecting and preserving our cultural resources and that means you cannot sell it mm -hmm. you cannot send it out of the country and transfer it to anybody else you keep that as your private collection and if at any point uh, you decide you don't want to keep it you contact us we we will keep it as part of the national collection mm -hmm. um bringing it back to the ambassador and that actually makes the point yeah. oh, go ahead adam sure adam <laughs> oh. oh i just wanted you just had such a good segue i didn't want to miss this opportunity <laughs> to bring out that there's another tool that Dr. Badillo and everyone at Niche has now too. And the fact that there was a little bit of a anniversary, we didn't get a lot of attention, but it is a really important one. And like last Thursday, February 23rd, was the 10th year anniversary of the cultural property agreement between Belize and the United States. And when you talk about a partnership to protect Belize's cultural heritage from being stolen, from being sold abroad, to being sold around the world, that's an important agreement because that is one of the things that because you have that per agreement, if Belizean cultural heritage gets sent to the United States, it can be stopped, it can be returned and repatriated mm -hmm. back to Belize. And we all know that not only are items going to the United States, but they're also sometimes you know, being transported through the United States to other countries. That's a very important agreement, and it's a very important tool that Niche and the government of Belize has, and that all Belizeans can rely on. And that, was, and that project is really, it's renewed every, five years. So Dr. Yeah. Badillo knows she and I were down in the weeds making sure that that <laughs> agreement grew. You know, going on a road trip to like the most remote locations you can possibly imagine around the country. But we were so happy to be part of that because we know that this is an opportunity to show what Belize has, how important it is. And so as a result, we know that that's been extended for another five years. Um, and we're so excited about that a fact that this is another opportunity for folks who may not say, it may say, hey, I can make some money selling this on eBay in the United mm -hmm. States. Well, guess what? There is a certain agreement that says you can't. Yeah. And so we're really going to be part of that process. I, Sorry, now back to you. Guys. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I appreciate that because that is, uh, that is information that the wider general public might, might not, not be aware known. of. Yeah. And, you know, there are consequences and fines if you are being caught soliciting and selling these um, precious artifacts. But I wanted to get back to the, to the fund itself because we're, we're quickly running out of time. Uh, Dr. Badia, you did say that the project is for 12 months. And based on the pictures, it seems that you've already gotten started. So um, how, how long more do you have to go? And I mean, I could just imagine the amount of work and the amount of personnel that it took to, to get here. Yes, so sure, how yeah. long do we have to go? Sure. So the project, the conservation project really runs through till about September. Okay. Hopefully we, we don't have any more delays. But then the, re the rest of the um, year, from September to December, we have other um, community engagement activities that we will be undertaking. Mm -hmm. And then there's a portion of time that we need to submit all our reports yeah. to the embassy. <laughs> yes, and then uh, uh, finally for me, um, uh, Dr. Badio, are there any other projects that are on the horizon uh, with collaboration with the 
uh, ambassadors fund? Well, I, I can't say at this time, but believe me that every year we take the opportunity to submit um, a proposal for them to review. So hopefully we, in the near future, we have more success with, with the grant. Wonderful. Right. Uh, Adam, Dr. Badillo, we want to thank you both so much for Zooming by, because I know I couldn't actually come in. <laughs> That's a Zoom by indeed. <laughs> Zoom by uh, <laughs> to talk to us about this important fund. Any final words from you both? Well, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be on here to share share this important news with the rest of the country. For us, it's very uh, critical that we address mm -hmm. the vulnerability of the structures out there at Lamanai. And I just want to say to everyone across the country, you know, if you haven't been to Lamanai, now is the time to get up there and see this work taking place. Wonderful. So please, please do visit. Adam? <laughs> And I'm trying to make February 23rd a special uh, cultural property agreement day. I don't know. I'm, I'm on mission. We can do this again next year this time. And then just remember this because I think as the most important thing I want to say is this is a partnership between, I mean, it's gonna, this is something that we both work on together. Um, we work every time when we run every time that they submit a proposal to try to make sure that the proposal can be super competitive against all the projects coming from Egypt, Peru, around it. And I think the fact that we got the biggest project we've ever gotten, again, almost $200,000 this past year is a sign of how important what the work we're doing is and what we expect to come in the future. Beautiful. Uh, Dr. Bredio, Adam, thank you both so much. Best of luck. And I hope that we can continue to get updates on the High Temple at Lamanai. Thank you. Thank you both. Definitely. Thank you, too. And with that, Thanks we are that. going to take another quick break. Uh, and we will be back with uh, what John is agreeing to. Oh, my god! Which gosh. is the Baron Bliss Harbor, Harbor Regatta. Regatta. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.